Hello, in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really smooth looking motion trail effect. We'll go over the basics of the effect, how to add a nice slow fade off, and I'll show you a couple of compositing tips to achieve a quick and easy retro look. Okay, in After Effects, let's create a new composition. I'm going to make my square and at 25 frames per second, and I'll call it Motion Trail Main. Let's begin by adding some text and we can just center this and we can select our text layer, hit P to bring up position. Let's move it to the top, add a keyframe and about a second and a half. Let's move it down to the bottom. Then to make this motion seem a little bit smoother, let's select our keyframes and hit F9 to add easy ease. And we can jump into the graph editor and we can just ramp up and down that motion. And finally, let's loop this animation. So let's all click on our stopwatch and type loop out. Speech marks and ping pong. And what this will do, it will just loop back and forth between our two keyframes. And now we have a quite nice dynamic movement. So let's pre-compose this by hitting Control Shift C and we'll call this Animation Pre. Let's duplicate our pre comp. We'll call the top layer Fill and the bottom layer Trail. And we can hide Fill for now. Now, like any good motion trail effect, ours is going to be built using the Echo effect. So go to Time, Echo, and let's just move down our timeline so we have a bit of motion. And just so we can see exactly what's going on with some of these numbers, let's just firstly increase the number of echoes. And let's quickly run through the properties. First up, we've got echo time, and that is the time in seconds between each of the echoes being generated. Next is the number of echoes that we're going to generate. Then we have the starting intensity, which is the starting capacity of each echo. Then there's the decay, and that is the ratio of the opacity of each echo to the echo before it. So if I was to set this to say 0.5, you can see that each echo as we go along is half the opacity of the echo before. And last up is the echo operator, and that is just how the echoes blend with each other. But we're going to leave this as add for now. So let's start dialing in these numbers. And the first thing we want to do is just reduce this gap between each of the echoes. And we can do this using it by reducing the echo time. And I found minus 0 0.005 works well. Then we want to inc increase the number of echoes. And between 40 and 50 is a good place to start. And as you can see, nothing's really happened. And that's because our decay is set too low. So we need to increase this so that our echoes aren't decaying too quickly. And for this purpose, I found 0.93 works. And we can preview this. You may need to set your resolution to half. Okay, this is looking quite nice already. But if you look closely, you can see that we do still have some sort of stepping going on. And if I zoom in, you'll be able to see it better. And a really quick and easy way to get rid of this is to add a Gaussian Blur. And you can just increase the blurriness until that stepping goes away. But I found something between 10 and 15 works well. Now let's add some color and we're going to do that using Colorama. And Colorama will give us the ability to change the color of our echoes as they go through their life. So go to Effect, Color Correction, Colorama. And what Colorama allows us to do is change the color of our footage or layer depending on the input values. So we have an input and we have an output. And because we want to change the color of our echoes as they go through their life and fade off, we can do this by setting our input as alpha. And straight away you can see that as our echoes fade off through their life, they uh, go through the color, colors of our color wheel. Now this isn't quite the look that I'm going for. So we can, let's start off by just selecting ramp gray. 
And as you can see, there's something weird going on here. And that is because Color Armor is modifying a few, modifying our alpha. So let's just go and deselect modify alpha. And now we can add some color. So I'm going to start off with a nice bright blue. And as it fades off, I want it to change to a darker blue and you can easily add a new color to this color wheel by just simply clicking. And I want a nice purpley blue. I want it quite dark, something like that. Okay. But you can see we've got some ghosting or it's a, it's a little bit muddy and it's not very nice. And that's because uh, Colorama is still blending our original colors with our new colors. And we can solve this by deselecting composite over there. And there we go. If we bring turn back on our fill layer, then we can really see this kind of motion trail that we've got going on now. And this is already looking really cool. Now, next thing we want to do is add the really slow ghosting effect. So let's start off by duplicating our trail and we'll call this slow fade. And so we can see what we're doing. Let's just solo our slow fade layer for now. And there's a few things we need to tweak in the echo settings in order to get our trail to slowly fade. First of all, we need to increase our echo time. And I found point, minus 0 0.01 is good. As you can see, that lengthens our trail quite a lot. Next, we want to increase the number of echoes. And then because we don't want our echoes to fade off quite so quickly, we need to increase the decay a little bit too. And, and I found about 0.98 works well. And as you can see, we've definitely increased our trail, but this isn't quite the look that we're going for. And in order to really reduce what's going on here, we can decrease the starting intensity. And we want to go quite low, so I found 0.15 works well. And there you go, you can see we've got nice long trails and also this sort of ghosting of our text. And one final thing we can do is go back into Colorama and just remove the lighter color. And just select that light color and drag it away and bring our dark color back up to the top of the color wheel. And let's unsolo our slow fade. And let's preview this. Now this is looking nice already, but there's a few bells and whistles we can add if we really want to try and sell this effect and polish it up further. So let's begin by creating a background and let's create a new solid. Let's make sure that's black. Let's call this BG. Drag that to the bottom. And the first thing we can do is add a really subtle glow in the background. And the easy way to do that is let's just duplicate our background layer. Call this BG glow. And let's add a fill. And let's just make this blue. Now you want it quite dark, something like that. Next, let's select our mask tool and let's create a circular mask in the background and hit F to bring up feather. And let's just feather off our mask so that we get nice and subtle. Okay. The next thing we can do to make our trail a little more vivid is to add a glow. So let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll call this glow. And go to effect, stylize, glow. And some settings that I found work well for this is to set the threshold to 40, the glow radius to 75, and reduce the glow intensity to 0.3. Now, like any old school effects, we want to add a bit of noise. So let's again create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this noise and go to effect, noise and grain, noise, and something between 20 and 
and we can zoom in to see how this looks. It looks nice, but it's a little bit too sharp. So let's add a really subtle blur. Again, let's create a new adjustment layer. Let's call this blur. Let's go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur. And we can set the blur radius to something between 0.5 and 1. And don't forget to check repeat edge pixels. Now to further enhance the effect, we can do a little bit of color correction. So let's create a new adjustment layer again. And I'll call this CC for color correction. And first of all, I'm going to add a curves and I just want to bring up the black levels. Then color correction, hue and saturation, and we can drop the saturation down, say a minus. Okay, and the final thing we can do is add some film dust. And I found a really quick and easy way to do that is using fractal noise. So let's start by creating a new solid and we'll call this dust. Let's go to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. And the first thing we want to do is reduce the scale to so something around 10. Then let's increase the contrast and something between 700 and 800 works well. And finally, let's just reduce the brightness until we get an amount of dust that looks nice. Okay, something like that looks good. Now I'm going to zoom in. And if you look closer, you can see our dust looks quite sharp. So to soften this up, let's just add another fast box blur. And we'll set this to something like 0.1. And select repeat edge pixels. Now let's animate this. And the easiest way to do this is by just changing the random seed. Now you could keyframe this, or we can do it using an expression. So let's alt click on our stopwatch and type time. And because we want to see our random C change on every frame as though it's actually film, we'll multiply the time by our frame rate. And if I go through frame by frame, you'll see our dust changes. And finally, just so we can see everything below our dust layer, we just need to change the blending mode to add. Okay, and there we go. I hope this tutorial is useful for you. And now that you have the base of the effect built, you can really play around with creating some cool looks. Thanks for watching and goodbye.